and four. Episode number three. All right, then, let's do this. Let's get rid of that. Okay, so yesterday we finished off um, basic CSS. We went through all of these, uh, learned a bunch of things. Uh, what did we learn? So import Google Font is something we learned. Um, I keep saying we, but I learned, something I learned. Um, let's see, set an ID, there was something about root. What's the end? Uh, yeah. RGB has three things, you need to memorize those. Designers will give that information. And then obviously there was different settings that override each other. I cannot fully remember what overrides what, but I know something overrides something else. Which I think is enough for um for now. Okay. Um someone's watching. Hey what's up man or women, whoever you are. Welcome to the stream. Um so today we're gonna go through your applied visual design. And yeah, let's kick this off. All right, cool. Introduction to the Applied Visual Design Challenges. Visual design and web development is a broad topic. It combines... Da -da 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 -da. Hey, yeah, uh, okay. At a basic level, web content provides use of information. And then all that good stuff. Okay, cool. Let's jump right in. This section of the curriculum focuses on the first group of challenges build on the given card layout. Okay, cool. Sex is often the last part, yeah. Sex align left, right, center, and justify. Okay, so what we did align the H falls tag sex. H4. Basically, just Google. Google to center. So we have to go here. Align to the center, right? Hey, look at that. It moved to the middle. Awesome. Ah, it never told me to do that over here. When is this H? Okay, whatever. So we are going to justify this. I think justify means same distance all around. Yeah, okay. All right. Submit and go to next chat. All right, you can specify the width of an element using the width property in CSS. Values can be given relative length units, such as AM. That is also something I remember from yesterday. Absolute length units, such as PX, or as a percentage of its containing, containing, okay. Add a width property to the entire card. Okay, use that one. I mean, it's kind of, they leave you this empty, like, whatever this is, rows, number 13, I guess. They kind of tell you where to go, which I don't want to learn like that. Rather figure it out myself anyway, whatever. Uh, it is what it is. So we want to add a width. We have to do that, and that is going to be 245. Interesting. Look at that. What if we do 45 and make it even smaller? <laughs> it overflows, but whatever. Okay. Cool. And just like that, we are 4%. Maybe change this in some of the message.
Um, um, all right, okay. What we're doing here, here we're adding a height. So I guess it's just going to be this way, horizontally, as opposed to the width. Look at that. I know exactly where to go because they added an empty section, man. They need to have an option to set this off. Go to hand, watch video, ask for help. I don't want to do that. Watch a video, what is that? Scrimba? What's the hell is a Scrimba? Okay, cool. They've got like tutorials and stuff. That's pretty cool. I guess if I get stuck, we can look into that. Alright, we're just adding a high property. It's straightforward. I is 25 pixels. I didn't do anything, did it? You may need to be 100% zoom for that. Am I 100%? 125. Oh, okay. That isn't changing anything. Oh, see what did they do? They moved it up. Okay, why is it doing that? Okay. So it's basically setting the height of just the this text by the 125. I guess it's all boxes, right? So whatever this box contains is gonna it'd be cool if I could visualize that, but okay, whatever. 25 good enough for now. Ask me later, man. Uh, apply visual design, use strong tag, make text bold. Um, to make text bold, you can use a strong tag. This is often used to draw. Okay, that's basically bold, huh? Strong. Wrap a strong tag around Stanford University inside the P tag. Oh, look at that. No space there. It means I've got to go in here. Strong tag. Back. Whoa. You see that? It did the whole entire thing. I guess I need to close it off somewhere here. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh no, they want it just within. <laughs> okay. I would have failed that test. Alright, gonna move it up there. That didn't work. Because that's um that is not working because that is should be bolding this text I mean, why is it doing anything? Oh, this man. Oh, I cut it, I just copy paste it. There we go. There we go, there we go. Underline is just a U, that's pretty straightforward. PhD student. So I'd basically wrap it around U and then I close a U. Then U. Okay. Sick. Like visions I use the EM tag to analyze the EM tag. 
style. So you want an EM in, around the entire. Oh, should wrap around the contents of the P, but not the P. Why not? Let's try. It. Let's see what happens if I do it. If I do it. I mean, it does work. Why didn't it want it like that? Well, why not? It doesn't tell me. Whatever. We'll just do what it tells me to do. And we are 12% just like that. Strike through. Let's tag around the word Google. We can do that. Yeah, put an S and then close the S. And then add alphabet in H4. Oh, no, wait, wait. And I need to re <laughs> read these instructions before I start doing stuff. Okay, so I need to close this one. I mean, I need to strike through this one and then change it with alphabet. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Applied visual design, create a horizontal line using the HR element. Okay. Add H underneath H4. Look at that. See, again, it gives you that. Whatever. Cool. HR. It doesn't need a closing tag. Oh, it's a... See, I need to read this first. It's a self closing tag, therefore, it doesn't need a separate closing tag. <laughs> All right. Instead of adjusting the overall background or color of the text to make foreground easily readable, you can add a background color to the element holding the text. So you Okay, cool. Alpha value can range from one zero to one. Yeah, we found that yesterday because uh, someone told me, man, I think it was Jay's, the lace on the stream yesterday told me about that, zero to one. Now you use da, 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 to make the text stand up more, adjust the background color. Also for H4, remove the height. All right, if it makes sense, I'm going to go with Background color. All right. Ah, added this gray thing. The code should also add a padding property. Padding. Is that top left, bottom right? Doesn't say. Okay, at least it. Okay, interesting. And the height should be removed. All right, cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay, let's go to Twitch. Mm -hmm. Mm 
All right, okay, let's just continue submitting. Go to the next challenge. You can adjust the size of a header versus a paragraph tag. The font size h1 through h6 should generally be larger than the font size of paragraph tags. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. To make the heading significantly larger, change the font size of h6. Font size 2. 27. <clears throat> okay, what else have we got here? Text align, text align, color, border, radius. Card. Okay. Sure. I'll run the test. Apply the visual design. Add a box shadow. Uh, <clears throat> the box shadow property applies one or more shadows to an element. The box shadow takes values for offset, offset more. X horizontal, Y is vertical, blur radius, spread radius, whatever. What is all that? These are optional. Multiple box shadows can be created using commas to separate properties. Box shadow, 10. I'm guessing this is X, Y, I just copy that. See what's going to be added. Let's out of here. See what. Huh. That's pretty cool. The element now has a an ID of thumbnail. Thumbnail. I see your thumbnail. Oh, okay. Div. I think what we do then is ID requires a full stop thumbnail. Open close brackets, and then here we're going to put what we're going to put. We're going. Given CSS, I guess I'm just using the CSS. Ah, oh, look at that. That's neat, man. Thumbnail, isn't that what I did? Thumbnail. Or was this? I mean, that's an ID, right? The class is what I select with hashtag. I'm pretty sure I don't think that's what I did wrong here. Oh no! Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> the class is dot and then. Okay, and the other thing is a hashtag. All right, cool. Cool, cool. cool. Submit and go to the next challenge. <clears throat> the opacity property CSS is used to adjust the opacity or conversely the transparency for an item. 
A value of one is opaque. An open five is see through. Zero is transparent. Zero to one, okay. Set the opacity of the anchor tags in open seven using links class to select them. Okay, we already have links. Where's links? Links here. Right here. So these things here, okay, we're gonna make them 0.7, so less transparent. Uh, so opacity, 0.7. Oh, you see that? It turned more, I guess, more opaque. If I highlight it on the page, open seven, run the tests, submit and go to the next chat. Applied business design. You use the tra text transform property to make text uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, capitalize, initial, inherit. Use the text transform value from the parent element. What's the parent element? None is not. What is the parent element? Parent. The element element selector is what? Let's be clear here, okay? There are no parent selectors. What the heck? There was a parent. Oh, it's a parent element. My bad. How'd you get parent? There's going to be a parent of an element. Man. Whatever. I will come back to that. I should probably make notes of things I want to. Yeah, that's what I need. Uh, okay. Let me bring up my notion board and we can add things on there. There was something from the first session that I forgot I to check. Yeah, let's get a running list of notes going and then we can. Yeah. We are going to get a pitch. Rico can no. It's going to be one of these here. All right. And then. All right. Question. What? Is a parent element? Mm. Mm, I guess drop uh, context. Just so we know where this question came from. Let's close. Yeah, All right, so we'll come back to that. Maybe it'll make sense when we, as we go through. If not, now we have it somewhere to do that now. Okay, so Hmm, what was I meant to do? H4 should be uppercase. Uh, X transform. Yeah, so we need X transform. Okay, is that it? The original text should not be changed. I mean, I'm not changing any text.
I feel like all of these like just to get used to, but none of this makes sense until I actually build the uh, build the project. Yeah, there's a tribute page and things like that. Set the phone to six. Oh man, why, 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 why? I, mean, I guess you want me to do it using obviously CSS stuff. So we'd go H1. Boom, boom. Copy that six times. And that's going to be. F oh, do you know what? I should have done this. Thing. Copy that one, two, three, four, five. All right, H one is gonna be sixty-eight. H two is gonna be fifty-two. H three forty. Thirty-two. And sometimes I wish I could just like fast forward myself because I know what I'm doing. It's like copy paste. Copy. It's kind of that'd be cool. Oh, look at that: sixty-eight, fifty-two, forty, thirty-two, twenty-one. What's the point of that? Oh, wait, oh, I guess that's just bold. Eight, six, five, four, three, two. I mean, that doesn't look any. Any different? A six five four three. Did nothing. It doesn't need a PX man. If it does, I don't know. Doing something. Okay, so it doesn't need a... Yeah, actually, you know what? Well, I think the notion thing might be... I don't know, um, just like bullet points we could do, and then start of every stream, I can then review it, by like learning points and whatnot. Um, so what was that? Font, weight, doesn't need a... Oh. So dated. Ah, it's too complex, All right, whatever. Man, why does it take so minuscule? Okay, yep, make it 16. That's better. Yeah, exactly. Make it more visible, man. You're hiding it. Live vision. Set the line heights. Line heights. What's the line height? Oh, let's see. Test it out or not? Oh, it's this guy. Yo. Cool. We are good to go. Uh, for example, the challenge pseudo classes. Pseudo class is a keyword that can add selectors. In order to select a specific state, what's a state? 
Okay, for example, the styling of an anchor tag can be changed for its lower hover state. Sorry, a hover state. When you hover over it. And then... Oh, yeah, that's how you kind of do that kind of stuff. Okay, that's cool. How do I do that? Code editor CSS rule style a tags black. Add a rule, so I need to do the this thing here basically. Um, a dash dash whatever the sign is. Hold on. Hover. So this should set a color for when it is in hover mode. Okay. And the way we check that is blue. Oh, look at that. That's neat. Run on the Alright, boom. Oh, okay. My brother's brought me some food, so I'm actually gonna eat some noodles if you don't mind. Well, uh. Sorry, I'm a little bit good, man. Man, I don't know if I want to eat on stream. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause and be back in.
All right, we back. Okay. Okay, so we just did a pseudo class. We're gonna hover. Mm -hmm. CSS treats HTML elements as its own box, which is usually referred to as a box model. Block level items automatically start on a new line. Think headings, paragraphs, and divs. Block level, okay, and inline items set so within the surrounding. Okay, the default layout of them in such a way the normal flow of a document. CSS offers the position property to override it. Okay. The position of an element set to relative, it allows you to specify how CSS should move it relative to its current position in the normal flow of the page. It pairs with the CSS offset property left, right, or right. Please say how many pixel percentage of EMs should move away from where it is normally. Okay. <clears throat> the following example moves a paragraph 10 pixels away from the bottom. Position is relative. Okay, Bob. See, so, you now what direction does that move it? It says away. Well, let's check. Alright, you can copy that. I guess we don't really need that. We already have one. Man, I'm so dumb. It says bottom. Well, actually, I guess it moves it this way, huh? Changing an element's position to relative does not remove it from the normal flow. The other elements around it still behave as if they were the No. Okay, so the H1 is dumb, it still thinks that this was a 0px. Hurting my back. <clears throat> Alright, there we go. Changing an element position to relative is removed or okay, whatever. It's good to remember that no matter the position of the element, the underlying HTML markup should be organized and make sense when read top to bottom. This is how users with visual impairments will rely on assistive devices and access your content. So change the position of H2 to relative, which, yeah, and move it 15 pixels away from the top. So instead of bottom, it's going to be top. <clears throat> Notice there is not there is no impact on the position. Yeah, these things didn't move it. That's cool. Ah, oh, there you go. That's what I wanted to know. What direction it moves. <clears throat> Yeah, it's the opposite, huh? So if you select top, it goes down. This is this thing. So it's here, and I've put top. I push this, and then that pushes it down. Yeah, okay. Use CSS top H2. Um, pick 15 to the right and 10 up. So this is going to be how do you do an opposite again? I just type top and bottom. <clears throat> um, bottom. We read bottom. What we do? Fifteen to the right. Fifteen. Sorry. Ten up. Up is not up. Up is top. Ten top. And bottoms also 10. I mean, that's just going to take it back to where it was, isn't it? Oh. Okay. 
Man, what am I doing? This is meant to be 10 to. If I wanted to move to the right, I need to do left. I do the opposite. <clears throat> I think that's it. No, it's not. Upwards. If I want to go up, I type bottom man. Okay. 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 There we go. Light visual design, lock an element to its parent, but absolute position. Okay, we've got relative and then we've got absolute. Which locks the element in a place relative. Unlike the relative position, this removes the element from normal flow, so surrounding. Ignore it. So the other things ignore it. Search bar. So we go into. Actually, I need to be oh. absolute. I can do anything. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> Position set to absolute. Top should be 50. Unicode should use the right. Top 50. Top 50. Oh. Man, 40% of the way through, and I feel like I didn't learn anything. Fixed position, huh? In the next layout scheme that CSS offers is a fixed position, which is a type of absolute positioning that locks an element relative to the browser window. So similar in absolute positioning relative to the browser window. Uh, it's used with CSS of the property. Da, da, da. The writer no longer realize where it's position. <laughs> it's like a Houdini man, David Blaine, which requires some layout adjustment. So one key difference between fixed and absolute positions is that an element with a fixed position won't move when the user scrolls. Ooh, so it's just like fixed fixed. Okay, as an ID, so we've got hashtag changes position fix. And then we're gonna add a top. What is <clears throat> zero? Top zero and what else is zero? On the left. Left is left. PX. Oh, see that? It doesn't, it doesn't move. Yep, so I'm going to go to the next chat. Uh, the next position tool does not actually use position, but sets the float property of an element. What the hell is a float property? Floating elements are removed from normal flow. See, what? what's a normal flow? Why does it keep saying normal, normal flow for talking about? Yeah, what is a normal flow? Is a normal flow. All right. Uh, floating elements removed from the normal flow of a document and push either to the left or right of the containing parent element is commonly used with the width property. Specify how much horizontal space 
the floated element required. Given the a given markup would work over two column layout. So you want to move this to the right. Give the left item a float of left and right item a float of right. Okay, there's nothing. Oh, look at that. Wait, 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 wait. Did you see that? So when the content moves to right, this automatically takes its place. Interesting. And then right. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. So basically, floats it like literally floats it. Colors, easy to see what's going on. Uh, when elements are positioned to overlap, i.e. position absolute, relative fix, sticky. Yeah, okay, just a Z index. <clears throat> okay, so let's go Z hyphen index, R4, 2, plus 1. What's the difference between one or two? Okay. Look at that, we are almost halfway through. Uh, apply the center an element horizontally using the margin property. Okay, center it. Let's see, there we go. Let's type in center. Also, look at that. Wait, did I set it to work? Oh. Cool Aid Man says, oh yeah. Oh, Complimentary colors. Color theory and its impact design is a topic. Emotion, visual harmony, color wheel. Okay, okay, okay. Red and cyan. What colors is cyan? That's like pinkish, right? <laughs> it's not, it's like light blue. Shade of blue. Okay, so what am I doing? I am change the background color of property of blue and yellow classes through their respective colors. All right, so blue is going to be this, blue and yeah, yellow. Boom, 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 boom. Let's play some music, man. I don't know, I'm listening to music on my headphones, so I keep singing songs and stuff in the background. Not that I'm talking to myself. Although I am talking to myself, because no one's in the chat.